New Testament movie day in celebration of finishing the entire New Testament from our beginner's Bible. Now guys, I know it's been a long journey and sometimes it felt like it was going to take forever to work through the entire Bible together. But guys, here we are. We made it and I'm just so proud of you guys. You guys stuck it through to the end and now you can officially say you worked through the entire beginner's Bible. Now, let me not take any more of your time. Let's grab some popcorn and get ourselves a drink and let's enjoy our movie together. An angel visits Mary. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a young woman. Her name was Mary. She was scared. She had never seen an angel before. Gabriel said, don't be afraid. You are very special to God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. Mary asked, How can it be so? I am not married. Gabriel answered, With God, all things are possible. Mary said, I love God. I will do what he has chosen me to do. Baby Jesus is born. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Mary loved Joseph. Mary and Joseph were going to be married soon. Joseph lived in Nazareth, but his family lived in Bethlehem. A new leader named Caesar ordered all people to go back to their homeland. He wanted to count all the people in his kingdom. So, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. Mary was going to have her baby soon. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a safe place to sleep, but all the inns were full. Finally, a man was able to help them. He said, I do not have any rooms left, but you are welcome to sleep in the stable. Joseph made a warm place for Mary to rest. While they were there, little baby Jesus was born. Mary wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and gently laid him in a manger. Shepherds Visit Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20 On the night Jesus was born, shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, an angel stood before them, and God's light shined all around. The angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring joyful news to all people. Today in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He is lying in a manger. Then a choir of angels appeared. They sang, Glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill to everyone on earth. The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem. There they found baby Jesus. They told Mary and Joseph what the angel said. As they returned to their sheep, the shepherds told everyone what they had seen and heard. All along the way, the shepherds shouted praises to God. Simeon and Anna meet baby Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 through 38. Mary and Joseph took baby Jesus to the temple. There they met a godly man named Simeon. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He knew Jesus was the Savior of all people. Then Simeon blessed Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. A prophet named Anna lived at the temple. She prayed to God every day. When Anna saw baby Jesus, she thanked God. She told everyone in the temple, This is God's Son, the Savior of the world. The Bright Star and Three Visitors Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 When Jesus was born, God put a special star in the sky. Some wise men who lived far away saw this star. They knew it was a sign from God that a new king had been born. The wise men followed the star. On their way, they stopped in the city of Jerusalem to see King Herod. The wise men wanted to ask him about the baby king. Now Herod was a mean king. 
He tried to trick the wise men. You must find him for me so I can worship him too, he said. The star led the wise men to Bethlehem. There they found little Jesus. They worshipped him and gave him gifts fit for a king, gold and sweet-smelling spices. An angel appeared to the wise men in a dream. He warned them, Do not go back to King Herod. So the wise men went home on a different road. An angry king. Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. When the wise men did not return, King Herod became very angry. He yelled at his soldiers, Go and find the boy! I will be the only king of the Jews! But God's angel warned Joseph in a dream, Take your family and escape to Egypt. Do not return until I tell you it is safe. That night, Joseph and Mary left for Egypt with baby Jesus. Years later, God's angel said to Joseph in a dream, King Herod is dead. Now it is safe to leave Egypt. So Joseph, Mary, and Jesus left Egypt and went back home to Nazareth. Jesus is lost. Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Every year, Jesus and his family would go to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. When Jesus was 12, they went to the feast as usual. The streets were crowded with people. On the way back home to Nazareth, Mary and Joseph couldn't find Jesus. They asked their relatives and friends, Have you seen Jesus? But no one knew where he was. Mary and Joseph went back to Jerusalem. They looked and looked for Jesus. Finally, after three days, they found him. Jesus was talking with the teachers in the temple. The teachers were amazed. Jesus was very wise for such a young boy. Mary and Joseph rushed to Jesus. We were so worried about you, said Mary. Jesus knew God was his father. He said, I had to come to my father's house. He loved and obeyed his parents too. So he returned home with them and grew stronger and wiser. John baptizes Jesus. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 22. And John chapter 1, verses 1 through 34. John was born just before Jesus was. They were cousins. When John grew up, he lived in the desert and ate bugs and honey. John told the people about God. They asked him many questions about what is right and what is wrong. John told them to be good and kind and honest. John preached about God's forgiveness. Many people decided to follow God. John baptized the people in a river. John told the people to get ready for a special person who would save them from their sins. One day, Jesus came to the river. John knew Jesus was that special person. Jesus told him, I need to be baptized by you. John was surprised, but Jesus said, It is right for you to do this. So John took Jesus into the Jordan River and baptized him. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven in the form of a dove. It landed on Jesus. Jesus smiled. Then God said, this is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Jesus chooses his disciples. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22, chapter 9, verse 9, and chapter 10, verses 1 through 4, Mark chapters 1 through 3, and Luke chapters 5 through 6. Jesus began to tell people about God. He knew he had a lot of work to do, and he went to find some helpers. As Jesus was walking along the seashore, he saw some fishermen. Jesus called to them, Come, follow me. I will make you fishers of people. Right away, they left their boats and followed Jesus. 
Their names were Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Later, Jesus met a tax collector named Matthew. His job was to get the tax money from the people and give it to the king. Matthew quit his job to follow Jesus, too. Jesus chose some more people. Their names were Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and another man named James. Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas joined them, too. Jesus now had 12 new followers. He called them his disciples. Jesus taught them about God's love. Jesus' First Miracle John chapter 2, verses 1-11 through 11. Jesus went to a wedding with his mother Mary and his disciples. Mary heard the servants say, There is no more wine. What can we do? Mary told the servants, Do what Jesus tells you to do. Jesus said, Fill up six jars of water, dip out a cup, and give it to your master. When they did, they saw wine instead of water. The servants were amazed. When their master tasted the wine, he told the groom, You have saved the very best wine for last. The disciples were also amazed. This was Jesus' first miracle. Jesus teaches on a mountain. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, and Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 23, and chapter 12, verses 22 through 31. All sorts of people went to see Jesus. Children, mothers, fathers, grandmas, and grandpas. They all wanted to hear what he was teaching. Look at the birds, said Jesus. Do they store up food in a barn? No, God feeds them. Look at the flowers, said Jesus. They don't work or make clothes. God dresses them in lush leaves and pretty petals. Then Jesus said, You are much more important than birds. You are much more important than flowers. So do not worry. If God takes care of them, God will take care of you. The Lord's Prayer Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 and Luke chapter 11 verses 1 through 4 When Jesus was on the mountain, he taught the people how to pray. Jesus said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. A Captain's Faith Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13 Jesus came down the mountain to a nearby city. Crowds of people gathered to see him. An army captain said, Lord Jesus, my servant is very sick. Please, will you help him? Jesus said, I will go to your house and heal him. The captain replied, You do not need to go to my house. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Jesus was amazed. I have not found anyone whose faith is so strong, he said. Then Jesus said to the captain, Go, your servant is healed. The captain ran home. He was happy to see his servant well again. A Hole in the Roof Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8 Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 And Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26 Jesus was at a house preaching. Many people gathered there because they heard he was healing the sick. The house was overflowing with people. Many had to stand outside. There was no room left, not even outside the door. Down the road lived a man who could not walk. He was paralyzed. His friends believed Jesus could heal him. They carried him to the house. It was still too crowded, so they carried him up to the roof. The man's friends made a hole and lowered him down to Jesus. Jesus saw that the men had faith. He knew how much they loved their friend. Jesus said to the man, 
Your sins are forgiven. The man stood up and walked. The crowd praised God. Jesus calms the storm. Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. Jesus and his disciples got into a boat. They wanted to cross the sea. Jesus took a nap. The waves gently rocked the boat back and forth. Suddenly, a great storm came up. Waves splashed over the boat. Winds whipped around the disciples. They woke Jesus up and shouted, The boat is sinking. Don't you care? Jesus asked, Why are you so afraid? Don't you have any faith at all? Then Jesus told the storm to stop. Right away, it was calm. The disciples were amazed. They said to each other, Who is this man, Jesus? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Two miracles. Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. And Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 56. One day, a man named Jairus came to see Jesus. He cried, Jesus, please come heal my daughter. She is dying. If you would just touch my daughter, Jairus said, she would be healed. So Jesus and his disciples went with Jairus. A large crowd followed Jesus as he walked to Jairus' house. Just then, a woman pushed through the crowd toward Jesus. She had been sick for 12 years. The doctors could not heal her. The woman believed that Jesus could heal her. She thought, I know if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. As the woman got closer to Jesus, she reached out and touched him. She was healed at that moment. Jesus stopped and turned around. Who touched me? Jesus asked. I felt power go out of me. The woman knelt before Jesus and said, I am the one who touched you. Jesus said, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Finally, Jesus arrived at Jairus' house. The people said it was too late. His daughter had already died. Jesus said, Jairus, trust me. Your daughter is not dead. She is sleeping. Jesus told everyone to leave the house. Then Jairus and his wife went with Jesus into the girl's bedroom. Jesus knelt down beside her and said, Wake up, my child. Right away she opened her eyes and climbed out of bed. Jairus and his wife were overcome with joy. A Fisherman's Net Matthew chapter 13 verses 47 through 49 Jesus told a story. One day, he said, some fishermen took their boat out. They threw their net into the water. All kinds of fish swam in the lake. When the fishermen returned to shore, they dragged their net out of the water and looked through their catch, said Jesus. They kept all the good fish and tossed out all the bad fish, Jesus said. The fisherman's net is like God's kingdom. Everyone wants to be part of his kingdom, but the angels will come and separate the godly people from the ungodly people. The godly people will live in heaven with me forever. Jesus feeds thousands. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 22. Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 through 17. And John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Jesus and his disciples were tired. They needed a quiet place to rest. So they got into a boat and pushed off from shore. A crowd followed the boat. Over 5,000 people had come to see Jesus. Even though he was tired, Jesus wanted to help them. He climbed out of the boat, and he began to bless and heal many people. Later that day, the disciples said to Jesus, It is getting late. These people should go home and eat dinner. Jesus replied, We can feed them. See if anyone has any food to share. 
the disciples found one boy. He had five loaves of bread and two small fish. Jesus said, Bring the boy to me. The disciples asked, How will so little food feed this many people? Jesus said, You will see. Have the people sit down. Then Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God. His disciples gave bread and fish to everyone. To their surprise, twelve baskets were left over. Jesus walks on water. Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 33. Mark chapter 6 verses 45 through 51. And John chapter 6 verses 15 through 20. Jesus told his disciples to go on ahead of him. Then Jesus walked up a mountainside to pray. Storm clouds filled the sky. Jesus could see the disciples in the boat. They were having trouble. The wind swooshed. The waves sloshed. The boat was tossed about. Suddenly, the disciples saw someone walking on the water toward them. They thought it was a ghost. Jesus called out to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. The disciples still weren't sure. Peter said, If you really are Jesus, let me walk out to you. Jesus replied, Come. Peter stepped out of the boat. He began walking on the water toward Jesus. Then Peter looked at the wind and the waves. He became afraid. Suddenly, he started to sink. Lord, save me! Peter cried out. Jesus reached out and pulled Peter up. Why didn't you trust me? Jesus asked Peter. They climbed into the boat and the storm stopped. The disciples worshipped Jesus. They said, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus heals a blind beggar. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12. Jesus and his disciples saw a blind beggar. He had been blind since he was born. The disciples asked Jesus, Teacher, did this man sin or did his parents? Is that why he is blind? No one sinned, said Jesus. This happened so that God's work could be shown in his life. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud out of it with his hands. He gently spread the mud on the blind man's eyes. Then Jesus told the man, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash off the mud. As soon as the mud was washed off, the man could see. Everyone was amazed. They wanted to find out more about Jesus. Money in a Fish Matthew chapter 17 verses 24 through 27 It was time to pay the temple tax. This money was used to fix up the temple. One day, some tax collectors said to Peter, Jesus does not pay the temple tax, does he? Peter replied, Of course he does. Before Peter could ask Jesus what to do, Jesus told him, Even though I am the Son of God, I will pay the tax. Go fishing. Take the first fish you catch. Look in its mouth and you will find a coin. Take it and give it to the tax collectors. It will pay my tax and yours. Peter caught a fish. He opened its mouth and found a coin inside. It was exactly enough to pay the tax collectors. The Good Samaritan Luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37 One day, a lawyer put Jesus to the test. He said, I know the law says to love God with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself, but who is my neighbor? Jesus told him this parable. A man was on his way to the city of Jericho. Some robbers beat him. They stole everything he had. The man was hurt. He needed help. Along came a priest. The priest saw the man, but he did not stop. Along came a helper in the temple. He saw the man, but did not stop. Along came a Samaritan man. When he saw the hurt man, he stopped. The Samaritan man cleaned up the man's wounds. He lifted the man onto his own donkey and took him down the road to an inn. They stayed at the inn. The Samaritan man took care of the hurt man all night long, said Jesus. 
In the morning, the Samaritan man gave the innkeeper two silver coins and said, Take good care of him until I return. After Jesus finished the story, he asked, Which one of the three men was the neighbor? The lawyer answered, The one who took care of the hurt man. Jesus said, Go and do as he did. Mary and Martha, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus were friends with Jesus. One day, Jesus came over to visit. Mary sat at his feet and listened to him for a long time. Meanwhile, Martha was busy cooking and cleaning. There was so much to do. The longer Mary listened to Jesus, the madder Martha got. She said, I am busy in the kitchen while Mary is doing nothing. Jesus, please tell my sister to help me. Martha whined. Martha, Martha, said Jesus. You should not be upset. Mary has chosen what is better. She is listening to me. The Lost Sheep, Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14, and Luke chapter 15, verses 3 through 7. Some people wondered who was most important to God. So Jesus told them a parable. Think about a shepherd. What does he do? He watches over his sheep. He gives them plenty of food, and he gives them plenty of water. He counts them up to make sure they are all there. If one is lost, he looks for it. He looks in the barn. He looks near the stream. He looks in the hills. He looks everywhere. The shepherd does not give up. At last, he finds the little lost sheep. He carries the sheep back. He calls his friends together and says, Let's celebrate. My lost sheep has been found. Then Jesus said, God loves every one of his children like a shepherd loves his sheep. When one of them sins, it is like a sheep that has gone astray, and God is very sad. But when the person turns away from sin and comes back to God, he is very, very happy. He celebrates like a shepherd who has found his lost sheep. The Lost Son Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32 Jesus told another parable about God's love. There was a man who had two sons, said Jesus. He owned a big farm. His youngest son did not want to work anymore. He wanted to travel and have fun. So he asked his father for his share of the family money. The son got the money. He packed his things and left. He couldn't wait to see the world. His family was sad to see him go. At first, he had fun spending the money. He bought expensive clothes and he ate fancy food. But soon, all the money was gone. He had to go to work, and he got a job with a pig farmer. He was so hungry that even the pig's food looked good. The son wanted to go back home. He said, I will tell my father I am sorry for what I have done. I do not deserve to be called his son. Maybe he will let me work for him. The father saw his son coming down the road, his eyes filled with tears as he ran to greet him. The son said, Please, forgive me, Dad. That night, they had a big party. The father exclaimed, My son was lost, but now he's found. Jesus explained his story. God is like this father. He is full of love and joy when people who are lost come back to him. Ten Lepers Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19 As Jesus was traveling, he met ten lepers. Their bodies were covered with sores. The lepers shouted, Jesus, please heal us. Jesus said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. The ten lepers left. While they were walking away, something amazing happened. All ten of them were healed. Only one man went back to thank Jesus. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you. Jesus wondered where the other men were. They did not come back to thank him. Jesus and the Children 
Matthew chapter 19 verses 13 through 15, Mark chapter 10 verses 13 through 16, and Luke chapter 18 verses 15 through 17. <laughs> the children loved to spend time with Jesus, but the disciples didn't understand. They said, Stop! Do not bother Jesus. He is just too busy. Jesus told the disciples, Let the children come to me. Do not keep them away. You must become like these little children if you want to enter God's kingdom. Then Jesus blessed the children. A short man. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. People crowded the streets to see Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to see too, but he was too short. So he climbed up a tree. As Jesus was passing by, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I want to go to your house. Zacchaeus scrambled down the tree. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. His job was to get the tax money from the people and give it to the king. Nobody liked him. He was surprised but happy that Jesus wanted to come to his house. A crowd of people stood outside the house. They grumbled. Why is Jesus in there? Zacchaeus told Jesus, I will give money to the poor and I will pay back anyone I have cheated. In fact, I will give them back more money than I took. Jesus was happy that Zacchaeus was going to make things right. Lazarus lives again. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. One day, Jesus received a message from Mary and Martha. Jesus, please come quickly. Lazarus is very sick. But Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. Then, Jesus traveled to the place where Mary and Martha lived. Martha went to meet him. <laughs> she was crying. Martha said to Jesus, my dear brother has died. If you had been here, you could have healed him. Jesus was sad. He cried too. Then Jesus walked over to Lazarus' tomb. He told some men to roll away the stone. Jesus prayed out loud, Father, I know you always hear me. Now show everyone that you have sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! Lazarus walked out of the tomb. He was alive again. Everyone was amazed. Many people believed in Jesus that day. A gift for Jesus. John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. One evening, Jesus and his disciples were visiting Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Mary poured some expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. Then she dried his feet with her hair. Judas was one of the disciples. He said, That perfume cost a lot of money. Mary should have sold it and given the money to the poor. Jesus knew the truth, that Judas wanted the money for himself. Jesus replied, Mary did what is right. She honored me. You will always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me here. The True King, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Luke chapter 19, verses 29 through 42. And John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Jesus told two disciples to bring him a donkey. He told them where to find it. Jesus rode the donkey to Jerusalem. A big crowd welcomed him. People waved palm branches and put them on the road in front of Jesus. They shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel! The leaders in Jerusalem did not like Jesus. They saw how many people were following him, and they were angry about it. They were jealous. A Poor Widow's Gift Mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44 and Luke chapter 21 verses 1 through 4 
Jesus and the disciples went to the temple area. They watched people drop money into the offering box. The rich people put a lot of money into the box. Then Jesus saw a poor widow. She put two small coins into the box. This woman's gift is greater than all the others, Jesus whispered to his disciples. Even though the woman is poor, she gave all the money she had. The rich people gave a lot of money, but they still have plenty left over. Washing the disciples' feet, John chapter thirteen verses three through thirty. Jesus and his disciples gathered together for a special Passover meal. Jesus knew he would be leaving them soon. After supper, Jesus removed his outer clothing. He wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he filled a bowl with water. Jesus washed and dried the disciples' feet one by one. Then it was Peter's turn. He said to Jesus, "Lord, you should never wash my feet." Jesus answered, "I must wash your feet for you to be part of my kingdom." Then he said to them all, "As I have washed your feet, you must wash each other's feet." By doing this, Jesus showed his friends how to love and serve each other. Jesus told them, "One of you will turn against me tonight." His disciples were shocked and said, "We would never do that. Who will turn against you?" John asked. "The one I give this piece of bread to," said Jesus. He handed it to Judas and said, "Do what you must." Judas quickly left. The Last Supper, Matthew chapter twenty-six, verses seventeen through twenty-nine. Mark chapter fourteen verses twelve through twenty-five, Luke chapter twenty-two verses seven through nineteen, and John chapters thirteen through fourteen. Then Jesus did something else. He picked up a loaf of bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces. He gave the bread to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, "This bread is my body. Every time you do this." Think of me. In the same way, he took a cup of wine and blessed it. He gave it to the disciples to drink. This is my blood. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. The time has come for me to go away. Where I am going, you cannot go yet. I am going to heaven to prepare a wonderful new home for you. But I will return to you soon. At first, you will be very sad. But do not be frightened. Soon you will understand, and you will be filled with joy. Jesus is arrested and crucified. Matthew chapters twenty-six through twenty-seven, Mark chapters fourteen through fifteen, Luke chapters twenty-two through twenty-three, and John chapters eighteen through nineteen. Judas went to the leaders. He asked, "How much will you pay me if I help you capture Jesus?" They said, "Thirty pieces of silver." So Judas took the money and made a plan. Jesus had gone to his favorite garden to pray. The disciples went along. Jesus prayed, "Father, if it is your will, I am ready to give my life so that all the people who trust in me." Will be saved from their sins. Soon, Judas arrived with some soldiers. Peter wanted to protect Jesus, but Jesus said, "No, I must allow this to happen." All the disciples ran away, and the soldiers arrested Jesus. They took Jesus to the leaders. The leader said, "You say that you are the Son of God. We do not believe you." The soldiers took charge of Jesus. They made him carry a big wooden cross. They took him to a place called the Skull or Golgotha. There, they nailed Jesus to the cross. Jesus died on the cross. Everyone who loved Jesus was very sad, but they forgot something important. 
Jesus had said he would see them again soon. Jesus is risen. Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 through 10. Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 10. Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 11. And John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. After Jesus died, some of his friends laid his body in a big tomb. They sealed it shut with a large round stone. Soldiers guarded the tomb. Three days later, the earth shook. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and pushed the stone away from the tomb. Then the angel sat on the stone. When the soldiers saw the angel, they fell to the ground. Mary was walking to the tomb with some of her friends. They saw the angel, who said, Do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He has risen. Go and tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is alive. On their way, the women saw Jesus. They fell to their knees and worshipped him. Jesus smiled and said, Go tell the others that I will see them in Galilee. So Mary ran to tell the disciples. Jesus returns. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 20. The disciples had locked themselves in a small room because they were afraid the leaders would send soldiers to arrest them. Suddenly, Jesus appeared to them. He said, Peace be with you. They thought he was a ghost, but Jesus said, Touch my hands and my feet so that you will know it is really me. The disciples cheered. They were very, very happy to see Jesus again. A net full of fish. John chapter 21 verses 1 through 14. Peter went fishing with some of the disciples. They fished from their boat all night, but they did not even catch one fish. Early the next morning, someone from the shore shouted, You have not caught any fish, have you? No. They replied, Cast your net to the right side of the boat, the man said. As soon as they did, their net was full of fish. Then Peter knew the man was Jesus. He jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. Jesus asked him, Do you love me? Peter said, You know I do. Jesus said, If you love me, then take good care of my people. Jesus goes to heaven. Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 through 20. Luke chapter 24 verses 44 through 51. And Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through 11. Jesus had told his disciples, I gave my life so that you could be with me in heaven. I am going there to prepare a wonderful new home for you. When I come back the next time, I will take you with me. But now, it was time for Jesus to leave. Jesus said, God has given me complete power over heaven and earth. Go and tell everyone the good news. Make new disciples, baptize them, and teach them to obey my commandments. Don't ever forget, I will always be with you. Go to Jerusalem and wait there, said Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come to you. He will give you power to tell people about me. Now the time has come for me to go to heaven. Do not be afraid. Then Jesus went up toward heaven in a cloud. His disciples stared at the sky for a long time. All of a sudden, two angels appeared. They asked, Why are you standing here looking at the sky? Jesus will return the same way you saw him go. Then the disciples remembered what Jesus had said. They returned to Jerusalem and waited for the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit comes. Acts chapter 2. Thousands of people went to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish holiday called Pentecost. They came from many countries and spoke many different languages. 
Jesus' disciples were staying there. They were praying together. Suddenly, a noise filled the room. It sounded like a strong wind blowing. The Holy Spirit appeared as tongues of fire on each of them. They started talking in languages they did not know. The people in Jerusalem heard the noise and came to see what was happening. The crowd was amazed and asked, How are you able to speak our languages? Peter said, The prophets told us this would happen. Then Peter told them about God's plan. God sent Jesus to save everyone from the bad things we have done. The people asked, What should we do? Peter replied, Ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. On that day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus. The disciples baptized all of them. The First Church Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47 The new believers studied with the disciples. They learned many things about God and God's plans. They prayed together. They sang songs and praised God. They ate meals and celebrated the Lord's Supper together. They shared everything they had with each other. God added more and more believers to the church every day. The Lame Man Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 10 One day, Peter and John were going to the temple. They saw a man who could not walk. He had not been able to walk his whole life. The man was begging for money. Peter told him, We have no silver or gold, but we will give you what we do have. In Jesus' name, stand up and walk. Immediately, the man jumped up. His legs were strong. He began walking and leaping and praising God. All the people who saw him were amazed. Peter told the people, We did not make this man walk. Jesus did. Many more people believed in Jesus that day. A Changed Man Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 19 Saul did not like Jesus' followers. He was on his way to put some of them in jail. Suddenly, a bright light flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. A loud voice asked, Saul, why are you against me? Saul was afraid. He cried out, Who are you? The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are against. Go to Damascus, and you will be told what to do. When Saul got up, he could not see. Some men who were traveling with Saul led him to the city. Jesus had also appeared to a man named Ananias. Jesus led Ananias to Saul. Ananias laid his hands on Saul and said, Jesus sent me to you. You may see again. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Saul could see. Then Ananias baptized him. After this, God changed Saul's name to Paul. He was a new man. Instead of hating Jesus' followers, he loved them. And he became a follower too. Paul's Journeys Acts chapter 9 verses 20 through 43 Paul traveled far and wide. He taught everyone he met about Jesus. The new believers were called Christians because they were followers of Jesus Christ. Paul traveled with different helpers. He shared the good news with everyone he met. He baptized many people. During Paul's travels, he started many churches. Sometimes he would walk for miles and miles. Other times, he would take a boat across the seas. He told everyone about Jesus' love for them. Earthquake in Prison Acts chapter 16 verses 24 through 34 
Some people did not like Paul and his friend Silas preaching about Jesus. One day, they were thrown into prison. But they were not worried. They knew God would take care of them. That night, God sent an earthquake. It shook so hard that all the prison doors opened up and all the prisoners' chains fell off. The guard thought everyone had escaped. He was terrified. Paul told the guard, Do not worry. We are still here. The guard was amazed. He invited the two men to his house. The guard and his family learned about Jesus and decided to follow him. The next day, Paul and Silas left to tell more people about Jesus. Jesus is coming. Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 through 2 and chapter 21 verses 2 through 4. Many years later, the disciple John lived on an island. While he was there, an angel came to him in a vision. In the vision, a bright light surrounded Jesus. He spoke to John. Do not be afraid. Write a book about what you see and send it to the churches. In the vision, John saw God sitting on his throne. A rainbow sparkled all around him. John saw that everything bad on the earth had come to an end. Then John saw a new heaven and a new earth. God said, There will be no more death or sadness or crying or pain. I will live with my people forever. Then Jesus promised, I am coming back soon. Oh, no! I can't believe our movie is over. That was really so much fun to watch together. Thank you guys so much now for joining me today. Now guys, before we go, let's first pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful journey we had of learning about your word together. Thank you that you gave us your word so that we can learn from it and become more like you. Please help us to remember every story that we learned in our Bible series and may it forever have an impact on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. So guys, that's the end of our movie day. Now remember, this is not the end of Father's Art Kids. I'll see you guys again next week Sunday for our new series that we are starting. Bye everyone!